The following program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries. It sounds make a difference. Sounds made in His honor what makes a difference. Because He comes. And that, if there's any secret to whatever God's used me in my life in playing, I only think about one thing when I play. I think I'm announcing God. That's awesome. And you know, it, that's it's, a great, that it's is a great. never about how great, and I tell you something, when you play looking to impress a man yeah. or an audience, you can never play to your full potential. It's when you get reckless, because I'm reckless when I play. I never know what I'm going to play. I just go out there, you know, and I find that that's the exhilaration that's the wonder, you know. That's when, when I get lost in the in the notes, but I'm climbing. I have a purpose. I have a direction. Right. I have a plan, and it's simply, hey God, ride the sounds, <laughs> because whatever is of God in you, you have to realize that. When David played, when he played the harp, I'm not even sure he played Christian music. No. No, he played. He actually wasn't even biblical. He no, was writing Bible. No, but what he was, <laughs> he was, he was the essence of what sound on the earth was created to be. Wow. An extension of his climb toward God. Wow. And so when David played, the harp, you know, although Saul threw a javelin at him to kill him, when he played, the evil spirit that was on Saul couldn't live because he didn't have sound support. Mm. No life support. And that's as true today as it was in David's time. The world's looking for God. And it's not just in the church, man. No. On the street. No. That's a very true statement. That's it. People are all looking for God. They are. It's like a, it's like a homing beacon inside of them goes off. And they come to that place where they go, why am I here? So they fill that because they don't know what to do with that. They fill it with fear. They fill it with entertainment. They fill it with just other kinds of music and everything. But there's always that beacon going, why am I here? And I think God put that there. Well, yeah, let me tell you something. I'll never forget. <laughs> I was at a music store one time, and there was a girl who was pretty stoned, leaning up against the counter, and a guy was demoing a synthesizer in the back. And she goes, what is that? What is that? That sounds like heaven to me. And boy, the Spirit of God really spoke to me. He said, I have built in the DNA of every man and woman a knowledge of heavenly sounds. Hmm. And they're looking for them. They might not know what they are. And they can't really describe it. But when they hear it, they know. Hmm. And see, that's, that's what God's doing. When you look at the technology of that motif, you know, there have been jillions of dollars spent to create new sounds. They don't yeah. know why. <laughs> but you know why. Mm -hmm. It's one sound, many voices. Attack, attack yes, decay, sustain, release. Yes, Nitty, sir. Right? When you play, you can trigger this sound, that sound, that sound. And when it penetrates the atmosphere, it's just become a new dimension of sound. Mm -hmm. Which means it is a foretaste of heavenly sounds to communicate to people who have a built-in awareness. That's powerful. It's a setup. That's powerful. That's it. You know, in John chapter 4, Jesus was telling that woman at the well, he says, you don't know what you worship, but he says, we know who we worship. He says, there's coming a day, and there now is, when the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. And I believe that's what you're touching on because it's an atmosphere that changes everything. If there's spirit and truth, there's three worshipers. Truth, little spirit, spirit, little truth, hmm. and spirit and truth. So you can't worship. And that's one of the things when we talk about technology, when we talk about the universe, when we talk about apologetics, everything is pointing to God. Everything Yeah, is you can't get away God. from it. Creation screaming his name. It, it is. And the thing about it is until you can never worship God greater than your revelation is of him. Mm. Say that again. You cannot worship God any greater than your revelation of who he is. 
That's why that's why music is so empty in some places, that's right? That's exactly Because right. they don't have the divine revelation they have no concept. of who God is. But let me tell you something. Sounds, because there's an anointing on your life to play and to minister. When that anointing, see, that's the missing that's the missing link in sounds. Because sound is created to emulate the spirit that's on the inside of you. When you think about David playing the harp, there's a contact made. Mm. When you play a note, when I play, see, I don't practice the trumpet. I play by revelation. Mm. I practice the revelation. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Because I know that if I can get no, it in it the makes, right place. Phil, it makes total sense. I'm not just saying that because you're saying that. It makes total sense what you're saying. When you understand. Because I've been there. Yeah. I can't take somebody somewhere where I've never been. That's right. I can't take them there. And you can tell the ones that have been there, and you sure can tell you can. the ones that have not been there. Now, that, that's not a hit against them, because if they will f focus on God, they'll get there. Or, or they don't want to. And again, it's because they don't understand Him. That's it. It's so powerful. That's it, brother. You know, it's very rare that I've talked to somebody. In fact, I can't honestly remember talking to anybody about you sing the revelation. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that before. And by the way, I apologize if we keep going on, but this is, this is what it's all about. We're going to have to come back and edit this a little bit, but that's, that's okay. It's, it, we're just letting it flow. I want you to go back to this. Let's go back to this. So just keep rolling, you guys. It's okay. Hey, this is the extended version, y'all. Welcome to the extended version on RomaFire.tv. That's what we do. <laughs> but um, that is extremely profound. It's extremely powerful. I, I was telling you earlier that I was in the Lakeland Revival, for instance, and I was standing leading worship. I'm sure you could. you have a testimony like this. And I felt like I was coming out of my body and I was watching everything from the sideline. But it was me playing the piano and singing, but I felt like a puppet being played by the puppeteer. And I was completely yielded. And it was like he was really just doing this with me and singing. And I mean, it wasn't the rush of the crowd. It was extremely euphoric. Mm -hmm. Extremely euphoric. It wasn't the, oh, wow, my ministry's growing. It was none of that. It wasn't look at all the people. It was like, simply put, it was God. Mm -hmm. If I could say it like Catherine Kuhlman, she would say, it was God. Mm -hmm. That's what it was like. Have you experienced stuff like that before? Yeah, I, n not many, many times. But just I, once, though. I, I was in Israel. The first time I was in Israel, and when I warm up, I warm up isometrics, and so it's not beautiful. And I was just warming up, overlooking the old city, and all of a sudden, it sounds sort of funny. It was like Peter Pan. All of a sudden, I was flying behind my trumpet, and my trumpet bell got really big, as if. A drug deal, right? It was, it was gigantic, and I was flying, and I didn't know a lot of the places I was flying over, but I heard a voice that said, "You'll play over the city." And I, I mean, it's impacted me to this day. But you know what? What I think is important. In order for God to perform, this there is are so laws. Good. Yes, sir. There are laws. I played for four or five presidents. And there's a lot of protocol with the president. First of all, you never go into a president's office and say, wait a minute, I forgot to put money in my car. You would never get back. There's protocol. And when you, when you realize God, by law, will never perform unless he's announced. And when you're a musician, you've been announced by the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sure. You know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Phil Drisco. Drisco? He plays the <laughs> horn. He plays something. I don't know if he's any good. <laughs> but we spent money to get him here. I sure hope that you give a hand to Phil <laughs> Drisco. Well, you walk out and you're about that big. Yes. Right? Right? And so 
it bothered me sure. for a long time. Why did Jesus say, I never do anything that my father, I don't see my father doing? And I've never heard this, and, and mm. I may be on dangerous ground, but I'll take the chance. No. You know, you remember Moses says, I want to see you to God. God said, no, no man can see me and live because I'm too bright. Right? I'm right. just paraphrasing. Sure. And Moses says, show me your glory. Can I read it? Just please, for a please do. we got all the time Moses, in the world right now. Moses says, Lord, show me your glory. I love the word. Where and are we going? This is Exodus 33, 19. In the King James, remember, God doesn't speak King James unless you do. Right. I like it in the Amplified. I'm going to read you the Amplified. In 19, and God said, I'll make all of my goodness, not some of it, but all of my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord. The proclamation is a, is a decree by a ruling power or authority. I will proclaim my name, the Lord, before you, and I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I'll show mercy and loving kindness on whom I'll show mercy and loving kindness. So God said, the key to you seeing me is I have to be announced. That is the principle on which all praise is founded. Wow. And so the next day, the Lord comes in, in chapter, in 33, in 34, and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Roy, I'm a pilot. I've flown a lot of hours through clouds. Clouds only inhibit your ability to see. They don't change the direction of the plane anything. or anything. No, nothing. You don't lose lift when you go no, through a cloud? No, 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 no. Clouds only inhibit vision. Interesting. So God is in the middle of the cloud. He descends. He's in the middle of the cloud, right? With Moses. Where are you? Verse 5, verse 30, chapter 34. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him, Moses, there and proclaim the name of the Lord. Now listen, God is standing in the middle of the cloud, invisible as if it were a curtain before a performance. God's in the cloud going, Behold, Moses, the Lord, I am the Lord, gracious and merciful. I'll show compassion on whom I'll show. He describes his character. And then the cloud parts, and God performs. The stage is set. And it's set. the same. It, the reason so many believers don't experience God performing Come on. in their life is they never announce Him. And they don't know to do it. But the minute they know, they can't but announce Him. And see, it's the same thing. Brother, they're great songs. But if you only sing a song and the song is the end result, you miss the whole point. The song brings God's presence, brings His power. God performs, but you have to understand that you don't get God to do anything except through your faith. See, you have to release your faith. And everybody's got faith because the Word says God gave it to every man a measure of faith. But it's, people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. If you don't know, there's a law with a president. A president never walks out in, without an introduction. Right. It's, it's protocol. Please rise and yeah. welcome the president Listen, of oh, the yeah. United States And usually America. there's music. Right. You know what's interesting? <laughs> Lucifer doesn't play the brass. Hmm. He plays Wind and the woodwinds. Yeah. He plays the rhythm, the tim timbrels, and he plays the viols, which are harmonic instruments. Doesn't play the brass. You know why? Tell me. Because the brass is the sound to announce royalty. Wow. I told it's, it's a wild story, but I, I was had a conversation with the Lord. I said, it was pretty wild when you kicked Lucifer out. Because when I was on my game, maybe I am now, maybe I'm not quite, I don't know. But I could tell you 
if you sit and play for me and I don't know you, I'll pretty much read your mail about your personality because it comes out. And I could usually, particularly with bass players and drummers, I could tell you within 100 miles of where you were born, where you played. Wow. Because it comes out. It comes wow. out. Not just stylistically, but it comes out in different ways, right? Right. But I, I asked the Lord, why, why did you kick Lucifer out like that? And it bothered me because my definition of God is he does everything perfect. Right. You know, he created you perfect, perfectly. And, and I said, it says in Ezekiel, and I won't go there, but in Ezekiel 28, that Lucifer was perfect in the day that he was created until iniquity was found in him. And I go, iniquity? And it says, by the multitude of your merchandise. Well, what was Lucifer's merchandise? He was the most fashionable angel in heaven, and he was the master musician. And when you think about it, fashion and sound are tied today on the earth. You never see a great artist that he doesn't affect fashion. You never see a fashion show that there's no music. It's tied. And I looked and I goes, well, why did you kick Lucifer out? But more than that, when did you discover the iniquity? You know what he told me? He said, I heard it in the sound. And by the time Whoa. that I had heard it, it had impacted one-third of the angels. And I had no choice but to get it all out. Do you feel like the moment that that even came, he was out? He was out. Because he can't abide in the presence of God. The no, moment the thought came, he but was gone, But remember, right? no, it was in a sound. It was in a, the moment the sound came, the he was gone. The moment the sound came. And I wow. said, well, I said, he said, the essence of my creation is free will. I created him with perfection, but I gave him free will. And you know, with all the gifts that you have that are listening, with all those gifts, remember, you've been given a gift, but you've also been given the freedom to use it for light or darkness. You'll use it for light, you're going to win big. You lose it for darkness, the end is destruction. In your life, did you start out, I'm trying to remember what you said in the beginning, did you start out in the secular world and then came no. over to ministry? No, I learned in church. You learned in church and then you got burnt out. My dad built 15 churches in his life. He was a pioneer. Okay. And I, you know, I, I had only one desire was to play for God. And then as my music grew, the resistance grew against it. Mm -hmm. Right, that's what you said in the beginning. Because, you know, Music is, is demographically organized, you know? I can go into any church and look at the music, music instruments and tell you who comes. And I can go and look at the people and tell you what kind of music they hear. There's a tie. And so I, I got to the point where I, I was growing. I, I, I loved Aretha. I loved Ray Charles. I would heard them, and I'm going... Why can't we do that for God? Right? Right. But then it was like, no, no, God doesn't like that, brother. You know, when I, when <laughs> I, when I sing, I mean, I'm, I'm going to drop some names here I've never dropped before in my life. So you're, you're giving me a little freedom here. Good. Not that I'm bound up to anything, but it's a freedom. Good. But I was, just as example in the Lakeland Revival in 2008, I was singing Devil You're Wanted, Dead or Alive. And we were going, da 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 And there were 80-year-old pastors that you and I know with their hands up going, yes! And I mean, you could feel the power of the battle against the enemy yeah. using that. And I saw that, and I was like, whoa. We took like a Phil Collins kind of song, you know? Sure. I can feel revivals in the air tonight. Sure. Do, 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 do. And I mean, it was just, people responded more so, more so than singing some old worship hymn. It was unbelievable. Exactly. But what you have to realize. Now it was by the Spirit. I wasn't trying to play a hit no, or anything. No, but what you have to realize that no notes are dark. Not even minor chords. Not even minor chords. <laughs> you know, that's all old wives tale. Sure. Because 
the anointing of a sound is not predicated on whether it's a C sharp major seven. It's predicated on the man that's doing it. The heart. The heart. The heart. That's it. And what that does, that sets If the heart spirit. is dark, the chord becomes dark. Yeah. Right? The end result becomes dark. The end result. The chord is neutral. Okay. It's sort of like if you have a fast Oof, that's car. That's powerful, man. That's if powerful. You, if you have a fast car, okay, <laughs> and you go out and you kill people with it, it's yeah. not the car's fault. Right. It's the driver. Like the guns. It's the same thing. It's not the gun. It's not the gun. It's the guy wielding it or the lady wielding that's it. That's the deal. But what it does, see, the devil has used that against artists and people that are called for God to restrain them and to con confine them. <sighs> but when you, you know, the, the, the essence of what God's going to do in these days is reckless. Spontaneous. It's going to be without great forethought, but with great skill. Because the musicians that played in the temple, they had to play for 20 plus years before they were ever allowed to play. They were the baddest guys in the world. Wow. And they played for God. Jam sessions didn't start in bars, they started in the temple. Wow. Selah, that's what Selah means. The musicians would play spontaneously right. and the people would meditate on what had been spoken or sung. I, I've said this, in the, I, was, I was interviewed on the Center Club and, and he said, what do you feel like worship is? And I says, you know, I feel like the songs, it's all about the songs getting you to the Selah. I love songs. But to me, the Selah is really where it's at. To Re me. Remember, Roy, that... Correct me, though. That, I'm open. No, no, no. I'm not I'm at open. all correcting you. I'm just Please. elaborating on it. Because don't ever mistake and confine worship to a song. Right. It is really the extension of the heart. That's why... You know, there's a lot of old wives' tales that worship should be soft. No, worship the Lord with all of your soul, mind, heart, and strength. So, you know, it, it's that law of sowing and reaping. Well, here's a great example. You sing Billy Preston's song. You are so beautiful. In fact, watch this real quickly. Watch this, sh watch this clip real quickly. Listen to this. You are so beautiful to me you are so beautiful to me to see everything I hope for oh Lord everything I need all well, that I need you are so beautiful to me Such joy and happiness Only you can bring Okay, okay. When you sing that song, most people think it's about a woman. Correct? Mm -hmm. But when you sing it, what we just heard, you're not singing to a woman. No, but you, what you don't realize is Billy wrote it to Jesus. Ugh. See, the second verse says, what such joy and happiness you bring, like a dream, such joy and happiness you bring into my life. You're the guiding light that shines through the night, your heaven's gift to me. Without even knowing that, I could tell by you singing it, as well as you sang it, you were singing that not to a woman, you were singing it to God. There's no doubt in my mind, and yet I didn't really know that when I first heard it. That's you know powerful. What's funny in the That's film. the sound thing you're talking about. And see, you raise me up. Now I will yes. tell you. Powerful song. I spun that song to Jesus. Because mm. he did raise me up. Yeah. So I could stand on mountains. He raised me up to, 
fly over stormy seas. I, I did, in the film, we, we bought several songs, Rights in Perpetuity, and one of them was Long and Winding Road. Because see, it's a new day, man. We have to get out of the Come on. Rigid, r regimented confines of religious tradition stuff. You know, look, Psalm says you don't catch a bird by sticking the cage up in front of his face. I would rather talk to people that have no relationship with Jesus any day of the week. Because when you play music, yeah. you have a license. When I sing Georgia, something happens. You know, it's, it's, it's an identification process. When you study a lot of hymns, they were barroom songs sure. before they ever became hymns. Sure. That proves that a, a, a melody or a tonal passage or a progression are not sacred to a darkness. Got to serve they, somebody. Wasn't that by Bob yeah. Dylan? Oh, yeah. Right? Sure. Yeah. Not even like the dance. Not be the heavyweight champion of the world. Might be some kind of soldier lane with them long strings of pearls. It's the whole deal. So when you when you see that, it it just takes all the boundaries off. But I I I I did long and winding road hmm. because I believe that they all lead to one door. You know, and you go well. That song was not well. I don't really care what it was written about because I trump that because I'm a believer. And I have full rights and privileges to to take anything and and redeem it. But it'd be fair to say you heard the sound that came out of the heart in that song. That's right. And you said that's I'll take that. Really what I did was <laughs> I went I'm always looking, Roy. How could I take that sound and build God's kingdom? <sighs> Because there's a, all kinds of people that that song is etched. See, what music does that people don't understand, it takes messages, words, and with melody and harmony and rhythm, it etches them on the tables of your heart where it time stamps you. You can go back to when I first heard a song. I know where I was. I know what I was doing. Because music does that. Mm -hmm. And so when you take words and you turn them into God's direction, because whether a song is pointed up or down is not dependent upon the song. It's dependent upon who is transmitting that song. Mm. And when you realize that, you know, don't get hung up. Well, well, you know, the guy that really wrote it. Well, so what? Yeah. You know, I'm much more powerful than that. I'm not confined with that. I'll, I'll take that song and sing it with everything in me and point it in God's direction and God will show up and ride it. It doesn't happen often, but when it happens, I love to watch somebody take a song that came out of my spirit and then they put a new identity on top of it. Sure. And out of their spirit, they even change it a little bit, but when I hear it, I can hear it from their heart. That doesn't happen all the time. Sure. But I imagine that is what you're talking about. You can it take is. anything and as long as it's got that heart, the purest. Yeah, and you know, comes out of the innermost to, being, right? Not to get heavy, but you know, <laughs> songs that are written. Am I getting heavy? No. Okay. No, but I mean that this whole subject is, is It's awesome. It's this an, it's an, it's a it's it's the battleground that Satan has used. It's the ultimate battleground in my opinion. It is. It's where all the money is, the focus, the limelight, it the, is. the atmosphere changes, everything. It is. There's, there is no question. But when you realize that there is an anointing on sounds and sounds that are pointed to God that are ear, that are unchangeable, right? Unlike those that are pointed to Satan. Yes. Those can be captured. Yes. But you could never take I exalt thee and sing it to Satan. No. It will not work. It won't work. You understand? You could even do heavy metal, it still won't work. Yeah, it, it, there's, a, there's a whole thing there. Yeah. Because machines were never intended to make music. They were intended to help the making of music. But when machines drive it, 
the anointing suffers, the creativity suffers. There's a lot of things there. That's why, wouldn't you say everything around us is just a tool? It's the heart that drives everything. Yeah, I don't play. People say you're a trumpet player. No, I'm not a trumpet player. I'm a trumpet. You're a trump. I'm a trumpet. This is the trumpet. That, that piece of plumbing just amplifies what's mm -hmm. in me. You're not a praiser, you are praised. I watched a video of you. You, <laughs> I couldn't believe what I saw. You stuck a trumpet mouthpiece on the end of a shofar. I did. And you blew that thing. In fact, we got a clip of that. Check this out. He took a trumpet mouthpiece, put it on the end of a shofar, and you blew this shofar like it was a trumpet. Watch this. Incredible, Phil. You know what's funny about that? I didn't do it. I only did it for one reason. There's 300 muscles right here. Right? Really? There's that many? Yeah, and I play I on that. a system of nonviolence, which expands my, my ability to play with great power, and it expands my endurance. I play everything on the palm of my hand. Mm. But when it comes to the shofar, I didn't want to cut my lips, so I put a mouthpiece that my lips are used to. Okay. But a shofar becomes a shofar in a process. It's wow. heated. It goes through fire. It's sort of like sometimes in your walk with God, you go through things and they reshape you and you come out with the ability to make a heavenly sound. And it has a really bad smell on the inside of that thing as you well. You can kill it. You know how you kill it? Tell me. Kill it with vinegar. With vinegar. Simple. It just takes care of it. Takes care of it. <laughs> mm. Not, not at all a spiritual revelation. No, simple, natural, kill it with vinegar. <laughs> that's right. That's that's powerful, man. That's just powerful, man. I feel refreshed just listening to what you said. It's um, like I said, it's very rare to find somebody that understands these things. I I really can attach myself to that. Praise God. Because that's my life. That's that's what it's been for me. You know, I'm yeah. I'm I was telling you earlier, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'll say that publicly. I don't have a clue. I don't think any of us really know what we're doing. Yeah, we're all seeing through a glass darkly. Yeah. But I I know this. There there are nothing that God is doing in these days or will ever do cannot be found in this word. Everything God does. And when you understand that, it's like... Say that one more time. I think people are going, what did he say? Nothing that God does now or ever will be or ever will do in the future. There's nothing that he does now or that he ever will do that can't be found in here. And when that gets... You know, when I practice, I find that I have to read again the manual mm. in my playing. Oh, and I always play, I usually play in bathrooms because they're mirrors. I play against a mirror all the time because it's a reflection of the sound. It's a true reflection. Mm. And you know, praise is really a true reflection of what's happening in you. And if your praise isn't right, your victory isn't going to be right. I, I understand that completely. You got it, yes, sir. But I, uh, I'll leave you with two. I'll leave you with two verses. One's in Psalms. I think it's thirty-two. It says, "I better, I, I better not misquote it." That's Let all right. Show you. Let's go there. We'll go there. Psalms thirty-two, and I think it's verse. Hold on, I find it. My Psalms. Look at my Bible. My Bible. 
my, my psalms, they're falling out of my Bible. It's sort of funny. You know, I really don't trust a man that doesn't have a Bible that's falling apart. To be <laughs> it's crazy. With you. you know, it's crazy. I mean, look at. Look yeah, at I my, got it. I mean, mine's all. I got it. I got it. But I don't want to change it because I got so many notes. I know. Right? It says. Where are you? Psalms 32. Psalms 32. What verse? Verse 7. I'm going to do it in in the Amplified. It says in the got King highlighted, James. Mr. You got it? Mr. Yep. Driscoll. You are a hiding place for yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. You, yes. Lord, preserve me from trouble. In other words, he puts in you something, some ingredient that trouble cannot win over you. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Now, when you think about that, Roy, how am I surrounded? It says, you, Lord, surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. How does he do that? I don't know. It's coming from you. Because see, a man that doesn't have, a, have God in him will never shout for him. A man that doesn't have God living on the inside of him can't praise God. Because praise is God himself moving through a man. That's what praise is. It's not just me. When I, it's not just me because praise is a heavenly force that's really for earth. There's only one verse in the Word of God that talks about praise in heaven. Only one verse. Because praise is not a heavenly force. Excuse me if I hit your theology. Praise is an earthly force designed by God Himself to propel His people into positions of great victory. Mm. That's what it is. And there's always battle involved. Always. Always. Praise. Always. But you surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. I don't want to blow up your deal, but I can, ah! if I do that, yeah. what's yeah. going to happen is that sound surrounds me. Yeah, something just shifted when I you am, did it. I am surrounded, but God says he surrounds. Yeah. Literally, Lord, you surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. So how is that happening? Because I'm singing songs to you, and I'm surrounded by you. I'm shouting, and I am surrounded by you because you say right here, you surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance, right? That's the, that's the, the end game of praise is deliverance. The end game of praise is total victory. The end game of praise, if you want to call it a game, it's not a game, it's I'm a true life deal. Yeah, I'm but with the you. end result is total victory, total fulfillment, thy enemies perish at thy presence. See, when God shows up, everything else changes. It's over. In your heart, when you're in that place and you're ministering before people, or even alone, do you, this is, this is me being personal now, do you have that sense inside of you, I'm going to touch you, God, no matter what it takes me, I'm going to get a hold of you, no. and I'm going to worship you? I don't. You and don't? I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, that, and, and this gets way out. That's okay. I've gone through some really heavy times in my life when I could not get the strength to praise. And it may, not, it may sound very strange to you. Not at all. But You'd be surprised. That's when I would get on my face and I would worship the Lord. Yes. I, and something happens in that time that I am strengthened in the inner man that I'm invigorated, that I am whatever you want to call it, you know. Because really when you look at praise, you know, the old timers would say, well, it's really tough and we can maybe muster a shout. But that's really not effectual praise. Praise, in order to qualify in God, has got to be, you have to find yourself in this word and believe it's true. And you have to believe that it's true to the degree that you see yourself in that position of victory. And you sound commensurate to that position. Hmm. Because if it's not, in other words, if you're in a great big battle and it looks like you're losing and you make a small sound, then that's unfair exchange. Right. Heaven doesn't perform that way. Right. I get that. Because it's not whatever time it is now in God in heaven.
Let well, me rephrase the question. Have you ever had those times where you have had that attitude or position of your heart, wherever setting you were in, where you had that feeling of, God, I'm going to get a hold of you? Like a Jacob. It's almost I'm going to get a hold. Sorry? It's almost desperation. It is desperation. Yeah. It is desperation. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. You, you have know, you ever had those moments where you just determine in your heart, all hell and heaven can break loose around me and everything falls, but I'm going to grab a hold of you, God. I yeah. believe. I. The only way I can equate it is like Jacob. Jacob yes. said, you're going to bless me. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. And we'll do this all day, Lord. You can kill me and I'll come up and be with you. Have you ever had those moments in yeah, your life? Yeah, I, I think that now that I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I might have, might have answered the wrong way. When you know <laughs> what praise from God's eyes is designed to do, then you praise Him, but it's different, Roy. It's in the Spirit. It is totally being, I don't know how to describe it, but you know that in order for you to attain the victory that you're believing for, you have to go here. And so you, you, you recklessly set everything aside and you go there, okay? When I... There's different times. There's times for oh praise yeah. and there's times for worship, right? Oh, that's right. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the bottom line is you know that worship is not intended <laughs> as a battle force. No. It is not. I was speaking And with all praise. due respect to those that we warfare, you know, and I understand, but I'm just telling you something. God's already accomplished all of the victory. I agree with that you know? statement. Yes, sir. And when you realize that I worship God because I'm so in love with Him, and I want to give him everything that I have because it purifies my life. It purifies my motives. You can't worship God and have weird motives. No. You just can't. No. It burns them right out of you. But I worship him for who I know him to be. And, and I know that as I worship him, he releases his life energy into me. See, that, that's... Maybe I could say something bold and you can correct me. And I'm, like oh, I no. said, I'm an open book. Please, no, I, I have nothing, nothing to hold on to here. But I would say over the years, and I'm a young guy, but over the years that I've seen spiritual warfare music used, I'm not against it at all. Mm -hmm. But in the majority of the places I've gone where I've seen spiritual warfare, I didn't really feel like somebody was moving spirits or changing an atmosphere kind of thing. It always felt like me, to me, that they were having a hard time believing in who they were worshiping. And so it was for them to get to that place where they felt like, okay, I believe now. Could it almost be. felt like a personal spiritual. In most cases, it's what I seem. Now, maybe I'm being judgmental. I don't want to be. You know, I have good friends that are there in that, in that place. And I would never disrespect their heartfelt. I hope I didn't do that. No, 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 okay. no. Their we're just heartfelt having a discussion assertion okay yeah but here's the way i do i do look at it and and it brings me peace okay you know bless the lord ye his angels who excel in strength hearken unto the voice of his word you know that verse. Mm -hmm. you know that at god's command are all the forces all the angelic forces at his command so and we know you've seen services in which you know there were onslaughts against what you were attempting to do to bring people into God's presence. Sure. You know that. Of course. So the way that I look at it, I don't look at it as if I am doing the warfare. Okay. I look at it as if I am a simple worshiper of God. I have power only because of the resurrection power that lives on the inside of okay. me. Okay. And so when I worship, I know that God's presence is coming and God fills all that is in all. And that means that every force of heaven is available at God's command. And so... Which He's already commanded. That's it. He's that's already way, commanded. That's the so way that I look at it. So you just step into it. I step in... You're not doing anything to position. attain it. You step into what's already been done. Because I know that worship is high 
priority on God's agenda and that he finds pleasure in my worship. Because Jesus said he was looking for worshipers. He found me. And see, when God shows up... Searching every heart for someone to worship him in spirit it. and in truth. And see, I believe that that's what makes... <laughs> I'm on a limb now. That's okay. But I believe that worship Please. is the eternal factor of heaven. Roy. It's like the food that we eat. You will not sustain human life if you don't eat food. But spiritual food, Jesus said, I have food that you, to eat that you know not of. And when you think about it, I know it's the Word. When you read the Word, there's, there's food that's, that comes to you through revelation, through the Holy Spirit. But it's worship that surrounds heaven. Worship, when you read Revelations, you know it's full of worship. Mm. Why? Because it's that law of sowing and reaping that has to do with everything that God ever has done or ever will do. It's in His DNA. You cannot give to God of your life energy without receiving God's life energy. That's why heaven is filled with worship. Because in worship, it's the, it's the currency of heaven. It's what buys your eternal life. That's a heavy thing. And see, that's the move. I believe it's worship that will bring back the return of Jesus. Worship I believe it's, it's, is the currency of heaven. That's it. Man. It's the exchange. Because all oh. other exchanges have been done. Jesus spilled his blood for our redemption. My God. He, he gave his life for our freedom. There's no more blood to be shed. Now it's all our life energy. See, when, when it says, worship the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, that is an eternal law. It never will change. It's the same on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. So I believe that God's desire is that worship on the earth be like worship is in heaven. Because God's dimension is not time limited on earth. He's every bit as powerful on the earth. It's just different dispensation. But when we worship him, the same thing happens that happens at the throne. Because we have a right to the throne of God on earth. We have been raised up and seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that's, that's, that's the new, if you want to call it, that's the new world order, brother. That's where we're going. And it's going to be worship, times that we worship God, that great healings are going to occur. Great miracles are going to occur. It's a different dispensation. It, you don't have to wait for a famous anointed man to come lay hands on you. Yes, sir. All you have to do is get in God's presence and worship Him. I can't tell you the times I've been in services and worship and people would come up on the platform and I'd be in the crowd watching the service take place and I'd be worshiping and they would say things like this, during the worship my back popped into place. During the worship my leg began to move. I believe that. During the worship my lungs began to receive the air that I never had. I had asthma. And all the, They all said during the worship, during the worship, during the worship, during the worship. And you know what has to happen because of the misconception of music mm. among believers. I'm with you. Because of that there has to be revelation that comes to dispel that worship is a preliminary exercise to bring on whomever. It's not really, if you want to know really the truth, music exists more for the one that's going to minister than for the people. <laughs> bring me a prophet. You just open up, the, you just open up the truth right there. That's it. That's it. Preaching's going to cease. It will. It now, would. preachers don't like to hear that, but I, I, you and I know a mutual friend. I won't name him on this right now, but you and I know a very well-known 
preacher, mutual friend. We talked about him a couple nights ago. <clears throat> In 2006, I remember him saying to me, he said, Roy, if I wasn't doing the work of an evangelist like I'm doing now, he said, I'd be a worship leader. He goes, that's how I started my ministry was I was a worship leader. I'd, I'd worship the Lord and then I would preach. Mm -hmm. I said, why would you say that, Pastor? And he said, because let's face it, at the end of the day, that's where it's at. That's right. You know what? And that's I a was preacher. Corrected. I, was, I know who you're talking about. I was really corrected by him because in, in watching, because you know. You know iron, who I'm talking about. Iron sharpens iron. Yes, sir. If you want to play great, don't hang around people that don't play great. Ooh. You know, it, because there's a feeding that occurs, but mm -hmm. there's also, it, it, it's the cell principle. If this is a dead cell, you put a live cell here and you put a live cell there, they will infuse life into the dead cell. Mm -hmm. And it's the opposite is true. For right. a live cell, dead cells will suck the life out of that cell. That's why it's important who you hang out with. Yes. But if you want to get great, get with guys that are great. If you want to be a great this player or that player, go find the baddest guys you can find and study them. Is that why it's difficult sometimes for the worship leader and the pastor to get along? Because well, this it's, always, it's always the battleground. Because sometimes you have the occasion where the worship leader really is hungry for God, wants to worship him with everything within him. And the pastor is very concerned with, I just got to preach the word and I don't really want to go there. And then you have the pastor who really wants to go there. And he's hungry for the word. And you got the worship leader who wants to get discovered. Yeah. But you know what the deal is? Because the pastor is really in authority over the worship leader in a church configuration. Correct. I agree with that. And what happens, you pastors need to realize. They need to have a relationship though, don't they? That your congregation will never worship God above what the pastor does. Correct. Yeah. And you know, Roy, but, the, that, but if the pastor's a worshiper, oh, yeah. you'll go to levels that you've never, Absolutely. you've never even described Absolutely. in words. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. It's powerful, man. I've really enjoyed this with you. That's been, I mean, it's we, been good. Thank you. It's just very powerful. And, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this extended version. This is worth coming to RomanFire.tv. <laughs> if you've been enjoying <laughs> Phil Driscoll, I want to encourage you to get his CD, by the way, on this extended version. He has I Exalt Thee. It's available for a love gift of $10 to the ministry or more. And uh, you can call that number on your screen. Even while you're watching on the internet, there'll be somebody to take your call or you leave a message. And uh, if you say, Roy, I want to do more than that, we're going to throw in the DVD and the CD stand up with Phil's CD for a love gift of $35 or more to the ministry. It's helping us broadcast and air this to you with all the work that goes into this. Call that number on your screen right now. We want to get this into your hands. And uh, Phil, it's just been amazing having you here. I am blessed you, by you, bro. Grace God. Man. I mean, Thank I don't know if I can call you bro. Oh yeah, man. Okay, I figured oh, a musician yeah. to a musician, but oh, uh, yeah. thanks for thanks for coming and giving of your time and everything. It's my honor, man. Really a blessing. Praise God. I hope to see you again. I know we God will. Bless you. Oh yeah, we will, man. Bless you. Well, listen, watch us next week. All together now. We'll be right back here, same time, same channel. Thanks for watching. God bless you. The preceding program was paid for by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries.